morning. This is Humanity Meets Business with Christine Salvo. Today we have a lovely, awesome, amazing guest. His name is Stephen Mays. As a session coach at Osteo Strong, Steve has a passion for helping members feel unbreakable and seeing them become stronger, more balanced, and more confident in their skin. Steve is a former college and professional athlete and has been interested in physical medicine since he was young, studying exercise, science, kinesiology in college at CSU Monterey Bay. Since then, he is constantly finding new methods to optimize athletic performance and overall health and well-being. After baseball, Steve became a licensed massage therapist and certified professional trainer, among numerous other certifications, alternative therapies, and transformational programs all to continue his love of helping others live happier, healthier, and more energized lifestyles. Steve discovered OsteoStrong during a Tony Robbins Unleash the Power Within event. He immediately saw the brilliance of the technology and knew it aligned with his mission to help people perform better, gain strength, and live life with less pain. After an old baseball injury and failed attempts for years to stay in shape, Steve met the inventor of OsteoStrong, Dr. John Jackwish, and was introduced to the X3 bar. In the subsequent six months, he transformed his body, losing 16 pounds of fat and gaining 18 pounds of lean muscle while enjoying more energy and less pain than he ever had. He is stronger now after one year of OsteoStrong and two years of X3 Bar than he was as a professional athlete. Steve now works with a select private group of clients who are hungry and disciplined to get strong as they've ever been, relieving pain in 20 minutes a day or less without injury. So welcome to the show, Stephen, quite the introduction there. So you know your way around the physical body, the athletic world, the massage therapy world, and now you're kind of into this world of, uh, of the skeletal system, yeah? Yeah, yeah, thank you. That was quite the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my tongue only got tied a couple times. There was a lot of big words there. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's... it's uh, taking me down physical medicine, you know, kinesiology, exercise science has always been kind of my interest since I could remember, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. And uh, it's gotten deeper and deeper, I guess you could say, you know, starting just as an athlete and then massage therapy and personal training and um, energetics and healing arts. Um, and then, yeah, like getting deeper into the skeletal system where, where, where we are now, but we really look at that like the foundation um, of the body, which we all kind of share as a commonality is our skeletal system. And then it's kind of our foundation that we build off of from there. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I don't see a lot of simply skin bags out there these days. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, some, there's some combination of, of muscle, fat and water. And, you know, it's like, uh, and, you know, muscle and bone musculoskeletal system is really the longevity system that we can directly impact, you know, and that's something a lot of people take for granted within their that's that is within their control okay. um, so that's something that I kind of like to to talk about is just we can really impact that specific organ our muscle tissue and it's the organ of longevity you know the the two undeniable factors of long life are being strong high levels of strength uh, and low levels of body fat so that's kind of where you know all of our all of our factors come from just trying to optimize those two things, those two pieces. All right. I hear you. Um, so I have been to osteo strong. I recently started going. And, um, one of the reasons I, I asked you to be on the show is I was just like, I don't know what this is, but it seems pretty cool. So we'll get into that in a minute here and you can <laughs> explain, cool. yeah. you know, just, just more of an informational approach to exposing people to new things because, you know, um, it is a little bit of a new concept and, sure. um, it's, it's not something well, right. That, that I knew about that probably you knew about before Tony Robbins. So I kind of always like the origin story. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and like why health and why, why all of these modes of, of wanting to help, like what's, what's driven that all these years? Yeah, that, I mean, really just coming, growing up, um, just really being interested in, in, I was active, you know, I like skateboarding and playing baseball and uh, I was kind of, I was into swimming a little bit too. Um, but then, you know, looked at like doing something on a professional level that can, you know, impact lots of people. So, you know, as a kid, like dreaming of, you know, playing baseball, that was the most rewarding thing. 
Um, but then after I saw, so I started personal training um, when I was like 14. You know, my, my family's well blessed and they, they hired a personal trainer when I was 14 to, you know, get, get stronger and, and put on muscle and, and really get bigger so you can compete at a higher level. And, you know, that worked for a little while and I got to a certain point, but then, you know, I would always slow, kind of slow down um, just because I would, if you got heavier, it would slow down, but I also put my joints at risk of injury. So that's what ended up happening is shoulder injury. Um, so I kind of fell off the path and did, and really, like it said in my intro, like tried for years to stay in shape, but just was demotivated because I was injured and it seemed like the stronger I got, the more I hurt myself. Um, or put myself at risk to be injured, um, even if I wasn't injured. So um, just kind of was demotivated. And then, as I mentioned, met Dr. Jankwish um, after a Tony Robbins event. And he was talking about the strength curve and how, you know, we're seven times stronger at our strong range of motion, our strong point in the movement, than we are at the weakest point in the movement. So if we're using a static weight through all ranges of motion, we're really overloading our joints in a bad way and underloading muscle, meaning we're, we're barely engaging any of our potential. So we're really leaving, you know, two thirds or, or so of our gains on the table. And so I was like, okay, wow, that makes total sense to me, you know, coming from an athletic training background and seeing my shoulder get torn apart, the, the stronger I got, um, I said, I'll give it a try. And I'll, you know, I want to be the best case study that this guy ever had. Right? So I just totally committed to it. And it's true. It's a lot harder than you would think, but it's very short. It's less than 10 minutes a day. And you just get this incredible stimulus because the, uh, the weight gets heavier as you get stronger. So at the top where you would n normally be the strongest, you're holding vastly higher amount of weight than you are say at the bottom everyone knows at the bottom of a push-up when your nose is close to the ground it's the hardest and so in that position you're technically the weakest um, in terms of the amount of force that you can produce so you want the least amount of pressure or resistance on your going through your joint as it's in a compromised position um, and then as you get stronger obviously the weight will increase so like I said, I'm in better shape now, you know, just had my 35th birthday and I'm, I feel better than when I was 22, um, you know, playing, playing ball coming up. So I just, I want to share this with people because I know that like, I mean, especially people over 40 who, you know, feel like they don't have the muscle strength or the endurance that they once had, or, you know, their, their posture is getting a little worse or they're, they're worried about falling or, you know, tripping or losing their balance or just not looking as good or having the energy levels that they once had. Um, that's all, that all can be reversed. And like, we have the tools now, like now that we're, you know, kind of into the future and we have these technologies. Um, so I just, I want to share it and, um, you know, and yeah, provide the information and then be able to answer any questions and, and provide the service if, um, you know, if people want to go deeper. Yeah, I love that. So when we were talking about what we we're going to talk about today, we, you know, you said a very impactful quote, and it was better living through technology, mind and body. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're an athlete that's been injured. And, and that's, that's a pretty typical story, right? Because when we're pushing ourselves, pushing ourselves, building, gaining, running, you know, we tear, we hurt, we rip, we break. And sometimes it doesn't go back the same way, right? So it really can, um, for any athletes out there, for our young listeners or people, you know, working on things now, right? In whatever age and stage they are in their life, we, we can all relate to the injured body and how that can actually affect our psychology, right? So when you're saying, um, I got injured and I tried to get to the same place and I couldn't quite get to the same place. And so I basically stopped, right? I had a low motivation. I had a low drive because we're often comparing ourselves to a past version of ourselves, right? Like, you know, back when I was 22, I could run a mile and, you know, this long. And now it's like, I couldn't walk a mile. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, but a lot of the times that will affect our motivation, right? So so in your journey of, okay, this is what I've gone through, so I must not be alone, and this is what other people have gone through, like, what can you kind of say about the, the mental side of this? Like, because it is mind, our mind and our body are connected, but often we act like they're not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great, great point. 
is, I mean, a lot of times I've found motivation doesn't really work. You know, you have to see, you have to know that you're making progress. You have to see results. Like you have to see that it's making a difference. If you're not, because that gives you faith, right? That gives you the belief and confidence to keep going. Because if you don't, that's why so many people quit. You know, they say if you go for six months, you know, and start working out for six months, then you'll stay with it forever. But most, you know, 90% of people don't make it six months because they don't see any results and they have all these negative associations to it, right? You go and you work really hard. You work, you know, you might go two or three times a week and they, and for an hour or more. And that old, that it's kind of an old way of doing it because it doesn't really give you results, right? We want to look at what's the effect you want and what's the least amount of stimulus that's needed to create that effect. And then like boiling water. I, I like to relate it like if you need to boil water, you only need to heat the water to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, right? If you're at sea level or 100 degrees Celsius. And then it changes, like the water changes. So if you look at your hormones, like in your body that create musculature or burn body fat, it's it's similar in the effect that you just need one powerful enough stimulus to create a change. And then once you reach the change, you don't need to keep, like I like to say, you don't need to boil the water at 300 degrees or like 400 degrees. You can, like over a cow. Yeah, you don't need to keep going. And that's what so many people do because the stimulus, like anything you need to do more than one set on, obviously is not a good enough stimulus the first time. So you have to oh. do it again and again and again, right? Okay. So, if there's a powerful enough stimulus, you only need one exposure. And then there's a change in adaptation or response. So with what we're doing, there's one set, you're done. And then you let your body recover and change and adapt for the next week or so, right? I mean, you need to recover. That's the whole process is, and really what I'm thinking, what I'm hearing you say connected to the mental and emotional is like self-care and like taking in you, uh, self love from yourself and giving yourself the bandwidth and space to rest and, and build, you know, because everyone thinks they're building, you know, all the time and it's more stimulus that creates it, but it's just one exposure and then you need to rest. Like we need to rest and allow ourselves to recover and build and give ourselves what we need um, emotionally. I think that's, that's a big, big gap where a lot of people are yeah. burning out. That's so interesting because, you know, I, I told you when I saw you, I was like, you're kind of breaking my brain here because it's like, you know, if a little bit is good, more is better. <laughs> and so, exactly and that's what I grew up with, you know, it's kind of our consumer culture. That's kind of what we're raised with and everything, right? Like if, if a little's good, more is better. So it's like, <laughs> do I need to come back five days a week? And you're like, no, that won't help you. And I'm like, do I need to do exercises at home? And you're like, no, that will help you. And I'm like, I don't understand what's happening right now. <laughs> Because, because if, if a little is good, more is better, right? And so really having to change that, change that mentality, change that dynamic in our brain, change the information, kind of very linear information that we're given about our body, our health, um, gaining muscle, and, and all these things, right? Because the truth is when it comes to fitness, we're kind of always told this one script. So this is a, it's kind of a mind blowing idea that, you don't need to do more that more actually isn't helpful in this case can you kind of say a tiny bit more about that <laughs> right yeah i mean traditionally i think the script in fitness has been like cardio is for weight loss and you know weights are for building muscle and it's just like that doesn't work there's like 40 years of research now looking at where cardio will protect body fat so the, the one thing that a lot of people I hear is, you know, you want to lose weight, like losing weight. When someone says lose weight, we have to look at that. We have to look and say, look at the language you're using. So if you say you want to lose weight, that would mean you're open to like cutting off your arm like that. It's a great way to lose weight, you know, <laughs> but it's like, no, if we just, we can't be loose on our language. We have to be very specific. And that's what we found. Like, you don't want to lose weight. You don't want to lose muscle which is what's happening when you're doing cardio, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're doing cardio more than say 25, 30 minutes, like sustained cardio, 45 minutes, an hour, that type of cardio is ultimately gonna, let me, what I like to offer is um, your nervous system is like an engineering team that you can't talk to. 
and your your nervous system is going to uh, you can talk to it based on the environment that you create around it. So the outside environment is going to stimulate your nervous system to change and adapt. So if you go into a sauna, pretty soon, no matter how old you are, you're going to start sweating because it's going to be a protection mechanism to protect you from the heat. It's going to cool you, your body down. So the same, in that same way, when you do long sustained cardio, you're, you're, the environment you're creating is like you, you want to be an economy car your nervous system is going to look at that like want to make you go a long distance so you want a bigger fuel tank so you're going to protect body fat because the fat will be the fuel so you want you you want to have more of that and you want to shed muscle because that's extra power that you don't really need and especially with your upper body it's going to be extra weight that's not helping you run longer right um and you're actually going to lighten the frame too so you know long sustained cardio you're going to actually lose bone density as well um, so that's <laughs> a lot of people ask, say, well, I'm walking, you know, and that's helping my bone density and walking is good for a lot of things, but bone density is not one of them. Okay. <laughs> you know? so. Yeah. I mean, I have to walk every day to stay loose. And so I can stand up and sit down cause I have some mm -hmm. pretty good back issues there and it really does help me, but I don't, I don't think of it for anything other than I need to keep my body moving because every, every time I sit for long periods of time, my body wants to stay there permanently. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I mean, the key, like the, the great thing about it is when you, you move, you move your blood, right? So a lot of times we'll, you'll say, well, what about the cardiovascular benefit? And so, I mean, you're moving blood around, you're making the heart pump, but it's at no significant intensity level. Because by definition, the more intense you go, the less amount of time you can do that for. That's right. why sprinters run 100 meters, right? But marathon runners run 26 miles, but they're not the same intensity level. Mm-hmm. And so anything that's going to create a, an adaptation or a change effectively is going to be a short duration for high intensity. Um, so when, with that, you know, you're going to get uh, an equal or greater benefit cardiovascularly from strength training as you would from cardio, quote unquote cardio, right? Um, so that's one thing with, with that, if you really want to lose body fat and body fat percentage is a great measure because it includes muscularity because the more lean tissue you have on your body, by definition, the less percent of your body is fat. So body fat percentage is a great measure um, of overall health. So you want to drive that number down and then drive up muscularity. So, you know, weightlifting, has just, I guess, by been by default, the the go-to thing to to build strength because no one's ever really thought about it in a different way. But what Dr. Jankwish has done is map the strength curve and actually put a quantifiable number on that what people would have been talking about the strength curve for a number of years, but no one's really quantified it. Um, and then obviously he's made his product with the X3 bar um, off of that. But what you know we're looking at is you know people gaining like 20 pounds of muscle in like six months, which is unheard of uh, with weightlifting. I mean, he himself put on 30 pounds after turning 40. So wow. that's just, you know, I mean, and really no matter what age or gender you are, you really want to be building lean body tissue. Everyone does, right? Because that's what's going to keep you healthy. You know, if you, if, if people get sick and they have to be bedridden, the only thing that you have to go on is your muscle mass. Mm. And you've seen it, you know, going from like the age 35 to 75, how there's um, MRI scans of where they call sarcopenia, where the muscle mass is just shrinking and shrinking um, just because it doesn't have a proper stimulus. Um, you know, that's the hardest part is getting a proper stimulus without the risk of injuring because up until now, weightlifting, the stronger you got, it injures you. I mean, you do chronic uh, cumulative damage each rep that you're, you're loading the body heavily in a weakened position. That's the only uh, way to do yeah. weightlifting, right? So what we want to do is lighten the load in a compromised position and then make it even heavier where you have more muscle engaged. So you get a proper stimulus and then you can rest and rebuild and you know, your nutrition has to be there too, but that's, you know, about half the game. So, 
So my old massage therapist used to say, she moved away, unfortunately, but I just loved her so much. And she would really work on these um, big bodybuilders. And what she ended up telling me one day was that later in life, you know, the guys that look real swole, you know, forever. Yeah. She said that it actually was scar tissue, not muscle. And so most of her job for these older guys that had been real big bodybuilders when they were younger was just working out the scar tissue because their flexibility was gone and they couldn't actually touch their toes. <laughs> and that it it looks like muscle from the outside because you're just swollen, but on the inside, the body just breaks down so much it creates all the scar tissue, limits your flexibility, and now you have all these other issues. I don't I don't know if you experienced that as a massage therapist or if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, really a little, a lot of pain and, and discomfort that comes from a lack of a range of motion, proper range of motion. And you said it with scar tissue, a lot of times the myth with weightlifting is that, you know, you want to be sore and the more sore you are, that, that means the better workout that you got. I mean, I know I thought I, that's what I subscribed to for a long time. Like if I felt sore and I couldn't move for two or three days, like that to me indicated I got a good workout. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> that I had to really rewrite the script on that because soreness equals damage. So, and damage, a lot of people think you need to create these little tears in the tissue and then it's going to grow somehow grow back stronger from that. And that's absolutely not true. That's not how physiology works. We want to, the only response, like remember our nervous system is going to um, be is gonna engage with our, our message that we're sending it. So if we're tearing muscle tissue, it has, we only have so much energy and your body has to fix the damage before it can grow. So they're actually inversely related, meaning the more muscle damage you have, the less muscle growth you have. So being sore is not the, is not the thing, it's not the ticket. What we want to do is exhaust the muscle fuel as fast as possible because that is the signal to the nervous system that there's a deficit of muscle and when we can do that we don't have to tear the tear the tissue we don't we don't do any structural damage we just exhaust the fuel fast as possible and then there's a neurological response that builds muscle from that but we don't have to attenuate any damage and we're not sore the next day like i can do a heavy a heavy squat and, or, you know, a deadlift and don't worry, no one dies, but that's just what the lift is called. It's a de you know, a, a deadlift where you're picking up an enormous amount of weight. And the next day I can go out and, you know, play golf, play tennis, walk, run, do anything I want to do. And because there's not damage to the tissue, but I got, I exhausted the muscle fuel completely. And that's what created the neurological effect to now add more musculature because the nervous system looked at it and said, look, there's a deficit of muscle based on how fast the fuel was exhausted. We didn't have enough here to meet demand. We had to, you know, we created the demand that exceeded what we were capable of, of meeting. So that's where it's, it's exciting to know when you get a proper stimulus, I mean, it takes, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to get your, your workout in. It goes anywhere and you're, you're good to go. You never have to miss a day of training and you get better results. I mean, it, I've, I've seen way better results um, for the time that I put into it than I ever did going to the gym. And I've been to the gym a lot. Like I, I did a lot, you know, <laughs> He's like, like, yeah. I work out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, specialized programs and, you know, plyometrics and agility, speed, power. I mean, all, all different aspects of, of training, um, body work even. And so I just, this is the best result that I've seen. And there's a so, reason NASA is considering it. To what would you that. tell your younger self, like with the information you have now and like, and for our listeners that are like, I have no idea what he's talking about, but it sounds interesting. Like, what would you tell your younger self? Like that's training that wants to play baseball, that's doing it because you're not saying that this replace, this replaces athletics. You know, you're, you, you said you can use it in conjunction with, right? So um, it's not like I'm just going to work out 15 minutes one day my whole week. That's an option, but I can also still enjoy all the activities that I like to do, correct? Yep, absolutely. So, you know, there's a, there's, um, a skill part of it, which the neurological firing pattern of like, say, a, a, golf, a golfer swinging a golf club, hitting a golf ball, or a pitcher in baseball throwing a pitch. Like, their only way to get better at that is to do that thing, right? You have mm -hmm. to 
you have to train the firing pattern and then that's a skill so that's skill based training but okay. then there's another part of it that's just the raw power based training where you know a lot of people will lift weights to produce more power so that when they go you know hit the hit the golf ball or they want to go run they can actually produce more power overall so this isn't replacing your skill training. So if you like to walk or you want to row or, you know, something that you're participating in requires the skill of doing something, you have to train that. But as far as just a raw power output and, you know, muscle only has one job and it's to contract. And then I guess if there's a second, it would be to release back to its um, full length. But if you can get a better stimulus at contracting that muscle, and get better results without the without the harm, you know, without the damage to the tissue, and you know, shorten your recovery time, shorten the amount of time that you have to actually invest to get the result. Now you have, you know, if you're only strength training, say for 10 or 15 minutes, getting every muscle in the body, now you have more time to go out and do your hobbies or do your you know competitive racing or whatever it is that you're doing. You have more time to go train for that. But yeah, this won't replace, you know, you're not going to be a better golfer by doing it, X3. <laughs> you have to actually train at the sport. So if you're an endurance athlete, you know, you have to train for that. And the goals of what you want to create in your body are going to be conflicting with, you know, building high amount of, of lean body tissue. Because as an endurance athlete, you don't actually want over, um, overly l large muscles in your upper body because it's not going to help you run marathons better right? You have to mm -hmm. train for the, the sport you want to do. So you just have to decide what your goals are and what, you know, very specifically clarify what you want to get out of it. Um, and for me, for, you know, people that, that I work with, they want to be strong and as lean as possible. They're not looking to run 30 miles or, or anything like that. They just want to be as strong and as lean as possible with, the, with as little risk uh, to injuring themselves as possible. Yeah, I'm with you there. <laughs> <laughs> with all of my appointments every week these days, I'm like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, so kind of like the younger, the better. I, I, I'm kind of getting the uh, work smarter, not harder kind of concept. Yeah. That's, I mean, I think that's kind of with like the term biohacking and, and doing that, they just, you want, you want a, a shortcut. You want, a, you know, you want, you want to get the result without, you know, the amount of time that it takes usually traditionally to get that result. So Steve, this has been incredibly informative and thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge and expertise in this field. So if our listeners wanted to know more or get a hold of you, how would they do that? Yeah, absolutely. This was my pleasure. This was fun. I think, thank you for bringing me on. Um, yeah. So I think, I mean, if you want to look at osteostrong, osteostrong.me is the uh, website. And, you know, they have 150 locations in eight different countries. So, you know, looking for a, a clinic near where you are. Um, and then, I mean, I guess we're on Facebook, OsteoStrong. Uh, we're in Reno, Puff Acre Park. And you can find me at Steve Mays 23 on Instagram. And that's, uh, that's about it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing all your knowledge. This has been Humanity Meets Business with Christine Salvo, licensed marriage and family therapist, advanced certified mediator and hypnotherapist. Thank you so much and have an awesome day and a vital body. <laughs> Bye. -bye. This is Humanity Meets Business with Christine Salvo.